The world has had its fair share of record-breaking roller coasters. From the tallest to the fastest, many rides have broken records upon their debut. Immediately after the widespread introduction of the steel roller coaster, theme parks battled it out to produce some of the largest, fastest, and most inverting roller coasters on Earth. Fast forward to today, and record-breaking rides don't pack the same punch. Some parks are still clinging on to this marketing method, instead with mundane records, claiming to have built the tallest of a very specific type of ride. Fortunately, many others have transitioned away from records, using other techniques to create unique attractions. Ultimately, is the era of record-breaking roller coasters over? Chris, screwy loops, hello. That question was aimed at you. Wait, what, me? In a coaster bot video? Am I... am I dreaming? Um... Parks across the globe seem to be squeezing records out of absolute nonsense lately, whether it's still Vence's fastest airtime hill of any hybrid coaster on the planet, or Taran's 116 intersecting moments. Records just aren't having the same impact anymore. Have roller coasters reached their penultimate limit? Will we ever see a ride faster than Formula Rossa and taller than King Dakar? The answer lies within Six Flags Saudi Arabia, of course. Maybe, maybe not. Help me out here, Harry. To find the answer, I think we first have to look back at what's been built so far. The real catalyst for building record-breaking rides was the introduction of the steel roller coaster, popularized by the debut of the first modern looping roller coaster in 1975. Steel roller coasters allowed theme parks to create bigger, better, and bolder rides. Over the following decades, many parks jumped on the bandwagon, aiming to introduce a record-breaking roller coaster to their lineup of attractions. These were fantastic marketing tools. Who wouldn't want to ride a world record breaking roller coaster? Parks pushed the four main boundaries height, speed, length, and number of inversions. Often, these records were linked. The world's tallest roller coaster stood a good chance of also being the world's fastest, too. If you pack more inversions into a single ride, you need more height to ensure the train makes it all the way around the course. To go bigger in one category, parks usually had to go bigger in several. So, to understand the state of record-breaking rides now, let's take a look at their history. Back in the day, breaking the height record was an easy feat, and because of this it's been beaten a grand total of 12 times since the year of 1975. This exclusively counts only full circuit roller coasters, where the train crests the tallest point of the ride, as opposed to shuttle coasters, in which a train climbs part of the hill before falling back towards planet Earth. The race to build the world's tallest ride was reinvigorated after the development of modern day inverting roller coasters, with the debut of Mindbender at Galaxyland, a roller coaster which stands 44 metres, 145 feet tall. Two years later, Kings Island's Vortex became the tallest, followed by Bandit at Yamiriland, Shockwave at Six Flags Great America, and the Great American Scream Machine at Six Flags Great Adventure. Wow. Then, in May of 1989, Cedar Point's new roller coaster eclipsed the record. Before this, most of the height increases had been incremental, with each ride being one or two metres taller than the last. Cedar Point aimed to blow the competition out of the water by constructing Magnum XL 200, the world's very first hypercoaster, a ride measuring over 200 feet, 63 metres tall, and oh my god on the acrophobia scale. This thing was huge, however it wasn't long before another park jumped in on the hype. Blackpool Pleasure Beach built the big one in 1994, a ride less than 3 metres or 10 feet taller than Magnum XL 200, which was shortly followed by Fujiyama at FujiQ Highland, becoming the tallest in 1996. But in May of 2000, Cedar Point were laughing as they yet again took the record by building the world's first Giga Coaster, Millennium Force, standing at a colossal height of over 300 feet, 92 metres tall. Okay, now this thing is huge. Sadly though, their aim to eclipse the competition didn't work a second time, as literally months later Steel Dragon 2000 opened to guests at Nagashima Spa Land, beating Millennium Force by a measly 8 feet or 2.5 meters. Crushed and devastated, Cedar Point took another swing at the record. In 2003, they constructed the world's first Stratocoaster, a ride measuring over 400 feet, 122 meters tall, named Top Frill Dragster. Of course though, with everything in the industry there's always competition. Just two years later, Six Flags Great Adventure built King Dakar, a ride which is 11 metres or 36 feet taller than Top Frill Dragster. Opening in 2005, King Dakar opened as the world's tallest roller coaster, and still holds that title to this day. Initially, it was all about pushing limits. How tall can we actually build a roller coaster? But as the record developed, it's become about cost. 
King Dakar cost a whopping 25 million US dollars to build. On top of this, due to their size, King Dakar and Top Thrill Dragster have become known for their unreliability. Simply put, building tall roller coasters is expensive, so it becomes a gamble. Will breaking the height record justify spending millions more? So far, it doesn't really seem so. Naturally, the speed record has been linked to the height record for decades. Since 1975, the world's speed record has been broken 12 times, starting with Screaming Eagle at Six Flags St. Louis in 1976, a ride which travelled 100 km per hour, 62 miles per hour. This was followed by The Beast at Kings Island, American Eagle at Six Flags Great America, and Bandit at Yamuriland. Then, Cedar Point built Magnum XL200 in 1989, which took both the height and speed records. Two years later, Kennywood built Steel Phantom, a ride shorter than Magnum XL200, but faster due to having a much longer second drop. Fujiyama then opened to the public as the world's tallest and fastest roller coaster, similar to Magnum. However, the speed record changed in 1997. Prior to this, the speed record was almost an afterthought. Rides that were taller just happened to be faster. But Dreamworld's Tower of Terror changed the game. It featured a launch to become the world's fastest. The ride used magnets to accelerate guests from 0 to 161 km per hour, 100 miles per hour in several seconds before sending them into a large spike. This launch trend would go on to continue with new launch methods. Dododompa at FujiQ Highland became the world's fastest by using a pneumatic launch system. This was then followed by the introduction of the hydraulic launch, leading to Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point, and then King Lucar at Six Flags Great Adventure taking the top spots. However, another park did go on to break the speed record once more. In 2010, five years after King Lucar, Ferrari World constructed Formula Rossa, a ride which accelerates guests to 240 km per hour, 149 miles per hour in under 5 seconds. Because of its hydraulic launch, Formula Rossa remains the world's fastest roller coaster to this day. Pushing the limit to speed doesn't come without its evident drawbacks. The faster a roller coaster goes, the quicker you navigate the layout, ultimately resulting in a far shorter experience overall. Whilst you may be breaking speed records, these come at a very expensive price, and typically people want more than a 5 second experience. Most stratas are over before you can say linear synchronous motor system for god's sake. Formula Rossa actually tries to get around this by slowing the train down moments after it reaches its top speed. Sure, call it a cop out, but there's no denying that launch still kicks all kinds of intermin buttocks. Unfortunately, the technology used to create what is currently the world's fastest roller coaster has mostly been retired, and despite how powerful and exhilarating these hydraulic launches are, they simply aren't reliable enough, and that is so sad. Companies now opt for more robust alternatives such as magnetic launches. Whilst these don't quite push the envelope for record breaking speeds, they are a far more sensible option for modern day coasters. The first modern roller coaster to feature inversions came in the form of Corkscrew at Knott's Berry Farm in 1975. Featuring the iconic double corkscrew, this ride pioneered the steel roller coaster revolution, helping to kickstart the construction of taller and faster rides. However, since then, the record has been broken a further 10 times. Corkscrew was quickly succeeded a single year later by Corkscrew at Cedar Point, a ride with three inversions, confusing I know. Carowinds then designed the first roller coaster with four inversions, Carolina Cyclone, which was quickly succeeded by the five inversions on Viper at Six Flags Darien Lake. Kings Island then took the record with the six inversions featured on Vortex, followed by Shockwave at Six Flags Great America with seven inversions, and Dragon Khan at Port Ventura with eight inversions. Seven years later, Fort Park aimed to take the record once and for all. They debuted Colossus in 2002, a ride featuring 10 inversions, four of which occurred immediately back to back. Since then, other parks have built clones of the ride, enabling them to co-hold the record. Whilst Colossus had an incredible run, a record is never truly safe. 11 years later, the same company that owns Fort Park, Merlin Entertainment, beat their own record with a brand new attraction at one of their other parks, Alton Towers. In 2013, the Smiler opened to the public with a stomach smashing 14 inversions. Not only does the ride hold the record, it also became one of the world's most dense roller coasters, taking up the tiniest plot of land with twisted metal track. Understandably, the Smiler's record hasn't been beaten since. It's an engineering marvel to construct a ride so dense and inversion heavy without it becoming painful, boring or repetitive. But it's so easy for that not to be the case. 
If the inversion record was to be broken, it's almost inevitable that a theme park would request a ride that features the same back-to-back -back inversions as an easy way to guarantee record-breaking status. The best roller coasters are ones which feature a diverse collection of interesting elements. The Smiler only just about achieves this, but will a 15 inversion roller coaster manage to pull off the same trick? Despite being such a simple premise, the record for the world's longest roller coaster has only been beaten four times since 1975. Kings Island took the record in 1979 with The Beast, a ride measuring 2,243 meters, 7,359 feet long. Twelve years later, the ultimate at Lightwater Valley was born, featuring a wonderfully weird and long layout. Then, in 1999, Daydarasaurus at Expoland became the world's longest. Originally, the ride opened in 1970 featuring five different tracks. Over time, these tracks were closed, leaving only two remaining. Then, in 1999, the park decided to combine the tracks together, creating a single, super long roller coaster. Just a single year later, Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spa Land opened to the public, measuring a huge 2,479 meters, 8,133 feet in length. Steel Dragon currently remains the world's longest roller coaster and one of the tallest ever built. Its extremely impressive size cost a huge 52 million US dollars to construct, partially due to its location in an earthquake prone region of Japan. But seriously, what is the point in this record? As we mentioned before, speed has a big impact on how long a ride feels, right? A shorter ride might have a huge duration simply because it's painfully slow. On top of this, owning the record for the longest roller coaster is extremely costly. Every single extra meter of track adds to the overall cost of resources, maintenance, and just think of the paint jobs. My god. Why Parks would want to break this record, I will never know. I can completely see why this has only been broken four times and unlikely to be broken again anytime soon. Unless you own a small park in the middle of North Yorkshire, <coughs> the ultimate. All of these record-breaking roller coasters are applying for their pensions because they are getting old. A height record hasn't been broken in 15 years, speed in 10 years, inversion in 7 years, and length in 20 head-banging years. That is older than the original iPod, remember those? Yet, theme parks still market their roller coasters as record breaking, but what on planet Earth are they breaking exactly? Let's be real, theme parks are now building the world's tallest, fastest, and longest of said specific type of roller coasters. Take Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point, for example. The ride allegedly broke 10 records. 10. Became not only the world's tallest, but fastest and longest hybrid roller coaster. That's a ride which uses a combination of wood and steel, in this case, steel track with a wooden support structure. Yukon Striker at Canada's Wonderland shamelessly claimed several records as well. It became the world's tallest, fastest, fastest and longest dive coaster, a type of ride which suspends guests over the edge of the first drop before allowing them to plummet vertically towards the ground. In both cases, these records were miles from the real world records, yet their respective theme parks market them as record breakers to attract more guests. It isn't just Cedar Point in Canada's Wonderland doing this though, it's become quite the norm across the entire world to throw in these kinds of buzzwords and selling points. Many theme parks across the globe now aim to beat the records of the specific type of ride they're building, giving them an additional tool to market the new attraction with. Anyone for the world's tallest Big Apple coaster? Anyone? I think that's a no-go, Chris. Fortunately, there's a whole host of other theme parks that don't do this anymore. Many have come up with different ways to sell their new attractions to guests by adding additional layers to the experience. European theme parks have been creating themes and storylines for their roller coasters for many years. These rides often place guests in the center of the story, allowing them to engage with the attraction more. A unique theme for a less than unique roller coaster can certainly help it stand out against the crowd. Take Alton Towers Wickerman for example, a ride themed to a cult-like group that wants to sacrifice riders to their effigy, the Wickerman. At face value, it's a less than impressive small-scale wooden roller coaster. With the theme and storyline, it becomes a spectacle and a journey. Guests witness the ride burst into flames as the train flies through the effigy structure multiple times. They also experience a pre-show before boarding and listen to a multi-stage soundtrack in the queue. Together, these details help to make Wicker Man a roller coaster that grabs people's attention and attracts new guests to the park. There's now countless rides like this across Europe and the rest of the world. Copperhead Strike at Carowinds in the US also has a storyline and theme which helps to enhance the ride at a theme park owned by the same company that operates Cedar Point and Canada's Wonderland. 
by giving guests a sense of purpose, a reason to be boarding the roller coaster, they instantly become more interested. Creating a theme isn't always cheap though. Many parks spend just as much on theming a roller coaster as they do on the ride system itself, or to help create an immersive attraction. These theme parks might not have the space or money to create a single huge record breaking roller coaster. Many, if not all, roller coaster world records require large funds to beat, making them very risky investments. But this doesn't stop companies from wanting to break records though. Anyone remember back in 2011? US Thrill Rides and SNS Worldwide unveiled that ridiculous new ride concept they called the Polar Coaster, a tall towering tower with a roller coaster wrapped around the outside. Sounds like a roller burrito, no? Several of these polar coasters were planned for construction, one of which, if built, would have become the tallest roller coaster on Earth, standing at a dizzying height of 170 meters, 570 feet high. More recently, a brand new theme park slated to debut in 2023 announced their plans to construct the world's tallest, fastest and longest roller coaster, which again looks a little ridiculous. Six Flags Quidia in Saudi Arabia would be home to this stupidly ambitious record breaking attraction. Just take a look at the park's concept video and see for yourself, it makes No Limits fantasy coasters look vaguely realistic. Naturally, many are skeptical about both of these projects. Not a single polar coaster has been built since 2011, while Six Flags Revolutionary Ride looks like it'll murder everybody on board. Ultimately, from what we've seen, it does seem that the era of the record breaking roller coaster is over. Perhaps that's a good thing if Chris is right about the murder coaster. However, many theme parks are continuously trying their best to market new rides as record breaking to attract the eye of the public. Some of these parks have introduced a series of wonderfully meaningless records just for extra attention. World's most intense ride experience, world's smallest full circuit roller coaster, world's number one wooden roller coaster, although you're not technically made out of wood Zadra so uh, stop telling porkies. We explore these wacky records and so, so, so many more over on Chris's channel, Screwy Loops. Why not follow us over there right now by clicking the video on screen or the i button or the link in the description. Thanks for watching this one and we'll see you very shortly. You've been watching Coasterbot, Tarara bit.